article, you would see like the very first slide, and my very first slide says, the worst sin. And um, I really want to talk about that today because uh, I think it's just what's been pressing on my heart lately. Um, I was watching this sermon by Francis Chan, and he was talking about what the worst sin was. And he acknowledged that all sin is equal, like n no sin is above the other. But um, he just said that if there was a worse sin, like a sin that could be the worst of all to have, um, it would be this one sin. And he said in the Bible, like there's so many examples about Jesus forgiving sinners and, you know, like um, being with the tax collectors and forgiving whores and things like that. Um, but there's just this one sin that he really hated. Like he just hated this sin. It was, there's no other word for it. He just hated it. Um, I think after I watched that sermon, it really struck me to um, in my heart, and it spoke to me the most because it's something that I struggle with too, and I think it's the biggest thing I struggle with. So, um, like you know, all of us have a, like different sins that we struggle with. Like some, you know, might struggle with gluttony or lust or greed or something like that. But this particular sin was the one I was struggling with the most. <coughs> Can anyone guess what it is? I believe in Jesus Christ, maybe? Unbelief. What? Unbelief. Unbelief, non belief. Does anyone else want to guess? Kevin, you can't guess because I think you saw this survey. <laughs> okay, so um, the biggest sin that Francis Chan thought was above all other sin was um, righteousness, self righteousness. And um, he was talking about how he hated, he really hated the Pharisees because. Um, they had this self-righteousness about them that they thought they were like holy believers like up there and then they thought they were kind of better than everyone else. And um, we all know that Jesus hated the Pharisees and I think when he said that it was just a really, it struck me really hard because um, I was reading about how um, he called the, the tax collector to come and join his one of the twelve apostles and he forgave the whores, like I said before, and um, yeah, so there's this one verse in the Bible in Matthew 23, and it said, Woe to you, teachers of the law and the Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but the inside are full with greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean the outside of the cup of the dish and dish, and then outside, and then the outside will be clean. And he goes on to say, Woe to you, teachers of the law and the Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full with, with the bones of the dead, with the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. So when I read this in the Bible, it's they're like back-to-back -back verses. I didn't like take them out from two separate um, um, chapters or anything, they're like right after each other, and he kind of said it when he's being repetitive like that, Nathan always says it's really significant in the Bible, and I was reading that, I was thinking, man, like he said, woe to you, you know, he's just like, he's just not I don't want to say condemning, but just saying like, I'm just so disgusted with how you guys are pretending to be clean on the outside, but are really dirty and greedy and self-indulgent on the inside, and um, um, yeah, that's kind of something what I struggle with and he went on to say like um, first clean the cup on the inside and the dish on the inside and then your outside will be clean as well and um, in the same way you know appear like he said you appear righteous to people but in the inside are full of hypocrisy and I think that's a really big issue that Christians have today is that um, we come off or like all of us come off as as um, self-righteous and kind of better than everyone else. And I kind of got that sense when I, when I went to City Impact, um, I went in there like, yeah, I'm going to save some lives today, you know, like, I'm going to do this, like, I want to preach the gospel or whatever. And, like, I had such a pride and proud attitude and I was going to serve that it kind of nullified the fact that I was serving. So um, it just I just realized that I'm having such a bad heart when, when we're serving, you know, serving others and, um, also, other other places in my life that I really see this this sin that's just coming up, and 
really dampened my walk with God. It, it honestly just like decreases my walk with God. It makes me super um, angry all the time and prideful. And um, I guess like a term that we can relate to now, because self-righteous, we don't really use, we don't really use that like in a daily basis, like, oh, I'm so self-righteous, but we use the word pride a lot, like, I'm so proud, I'm so proud that I did this at work, or I'm so proud I got an A on my test, or I'm so proud that I went to City Impact this week, or whatever, you know, like, we use the word pride a lot, and we have a lot of pride in ourselves, and, or at least I do, and um, I was just thinking, like, imagine how much more meaningful our, our lives would be, how much more love we would be able to give if we, if we just let go of that pride. And so, um, I guess another kind of testimony that I wanted to share was um, at school, when I'm in the hospital, um, like, there's this, like, uh, saying where, um, that we say that nurses eat their young. And it's kind of like really graphic or whatever. But it's basically saying how like older nurses, like that been nurses for 50 years, um, really narc down on the student nurses or new nurses because you know they have so much experience. And me, like I'm really timid in the hospital because I'm a nursing student and I don't want to like step on anyone's toes or anything. But um, when I'm in there, you know, they kind of just ridicule you, like, why didn't you learn that in school? Like, you don't know that already? Or how come you can't do that? Like, why are you being so incompetent? You know, like, and they'll say things like that, and they'll put me down and put my friends down, and we've all really experienced that in, in the hospital. And, like, it just makes you feel so small, you know? And, like, when I remember coming out of every clinical day, and I'm thinking, I will never be that nurse. Like, I will never be the type of nurse that squashes on people all the time. And then, like, after I was, like, thinking about that, I was like, man, you know what? Like, I do that all the time. Like, <laughs> I do that all the time at work, right? And, like, that's how I am at work. And I just see how work is just corrupting me, like, slowly to, to believe that I, myself, I worked for my pride. I worked for my status. I worked for where I'm at. And I just think that's really deadly because it, it, it pushes you to, to compare yourself to others. It pushes, it pushes you to look down on other people. It, like... Um, it makes it hard for me to sympathize or empathize with someone. So I just think that's a really, really, really bad quality to have um, with myself, you know, for me to have. And um, so I thought of what is the opposite of pride, and does anyone know? Yes, humility. Um, I was thinking. If I was more humble, if I loved others, it would be so much easier for me to serve with a right heart and like serve that God would be really proud of me, proud of me instead of me being proud of myself. So I was looking um, at a verse in the Bible, and or actually a couple of verses. And in 1 Peter 5.5 it says, Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And um, that last line, God opposes the proud, he opposes them, like he goes against them, but gives grace to the humble. And and if you're humble with your heart, even with your pride, you know, he'll just give you grace. And then, again, in Psalms uh, 149.4, it says, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. And I'm not saying that, you know, proud people can't get salvation or anything like that, but it's it's so, um, so humbling. <laughs> I don't know, I can't think of a better word. To, to know that if you have this type of heart, that's how, he will, that's what he will bless you with, is salvation. Lastly, um, in Proverbs, it said, when pride comes, then comes to disgrace, but with humble is wisdom. So, um, when I think back to the nurses and how they think they're so they're so prideful because they have a lot of knowledge. You know, they're really smart. I have to give it to them. They're very skilled. They're they're really good at their jobs. But um, like with that pride, God said, will come disgrace. And if they were humble about their skills, they were humble about um, their job and things like that. Like how much um, wisdom, how much more wisdom, how much more blessing would God bless them? So, um, yeah, that's basically just what's been on my heart, and I didn't know that my story would be this short, but, <laughs> yes, that's all. Thank you. <laughs>